Hello everybody, welcome back to Happy Little Diodes, where today we'll be fitting this FPGA board to a knackered old specy to create the ultimate undercover HD specy machine. As far as I can tell, FPGA stands for flipping perfect graphics in that. Or in reality, a field programmable gate array. Not just for graphics, these chips can be programmed to do pretty much anything you can think of. And in this case, the designer Copper Dragon has used it to create a board that replaces the RF modulator to produce a HD S video output. There's a link in the description to Copper Dragon's GitHub page where you can find lots more information about this board and also find out where you can buy one for yourself. Now, in order to fit this, the first thing you need to do is remove the RF box from your board. This is connected by two thin wires at the edge of the board and two thick connectors that I'm trying to desolder here. This really took some doing, so I recommend first of all using a solder sucker and some uh, solder braid like this to do your best to remove as much solder as possible from the two joints. I then started to actually remove the RF box by applying heat to the joint and pushing down on the pin with a screwdriver. And in the end, it did pop out like this. And applying the same technique to the other pin, the RF box was pretty much out. It just needed heating up one last time and giving the pin a bit of a poke and it fell out. The FPGA board has two pins in the same place as the two joints that we just desoldered, so it drops straight in. Using blue tack to hold the board in place, I soldered the two joints. You definitely want to be liberal with the solder here, as these are pretty big connections to ground. You'll want to reheat the joints and apply some pressure on the board from the top so that it's sitting flush to your PCB. Before getting into the fiddly job of hooking up all the different lines to the FPGA board, I wanted to replace the old 7805 regulator with this Traco switching regulator. These regulators run cool, so you don't need the big ugly heatsink anymore. Now for the fiddly bit. In order to function, the FPGA board requires all 8 bits from the data bus, 3 control signals, CAS, IO and WR, and it also needs a plus 5 volts feed. Here I'm finding a plus 5 volts feed and connecting it up to the board using some 30 AWG wire. And now for the three control signals, which can all be taken directly from the ULA. At this point, you need to find some convenient places to pick up the eight data lines of the data bus. By referring to the schematic for your board, and by using a multimeter in continuity mode, you can find some useful joints to tap into the data lines. Once I found one like this, I used a scalpel to scrape away at the solder mask so I can make a good connection. And there it is all hooked up. I found it quite tricky working with a small wire and making these small connections. Well. They're smaller than the usual connections you're making on a specy, but in the end I think it's neat enough and I really hope it works. But before I get into testing it, I mentioned earlier that this needs to be an undercover HD specy. This machine and the FPGA board were sent to me with a request to make it this way, so luckily I have this old knackered faceplate from an eBay repair job. I'm going to spray it with plastico to preserve it in its current condition. 
Now I hope I'm doing this right. I've never used spray paint before. Looking at the video, maybe I should have held it a bit further away, but you're going to see the end result is pretty good. While that dries, we can take a look at the video output from this new board and compare it to a normal composite video output. On the left we have the composite video, and on the right we'll see the component S video output from the FPGA board. It's clearly super crisp in comparison. Now let's watch the Manic Miner screensaver. If you turn the audio off and leave the game to do nothing, it starts to cycle through all these wacky colours, which seems like a really good test. So let's watch. Well I have to say, in my opinion, the component video is much much higher quality than the composite video. But is that necessarily what you want? I guess it depends on your personal preferences. If you're looking for the absolute best quality output from your Speccy, then something like this or a ZXHD is the way to go. Whereas if you want an authentic, old school retro experience, then you probably don't want to be looking at these HD pixel perfect solutions. In some ways, with the Pixel Perfect HD solutions, you might be looking at the game as the designer wanted the game to appear, as the designer was presumably designing their characters and graphics pixel by pixel. But again, that doesn't really reflect the authentic experience of playing on a real Speccy on an old CRT TV. Personally, I am a fan of these HD solutions. I'm really impressed that the designers can get them to work, and I'm thinking about getting one for myself. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe.